get to your sound, your unique sound of Slayer, the most brutal, fresh band. How how was that? The transition to to metal thing to this to your own song. Yeah. It just kind of happened. I mean, we didn't just you know sit down one day and say, hey, we're gonna be fast now. You know, we just I, I think it all came together when we were gonna do that metal massacre, first metal massacre album. You know, and it, you know then we were like. To me, it was like competition, you know. Ten bands, like, gotta go, you know, just go out and blow these guys away. So he wrote a song particularly for that, which was Aggressive Perfector. And then from then on, we just stayed with that style. Was it important for you, this participation in the Metal Massacre? Was it a record deal? Yeah. Open the doors? I don't know if it opened a door, but it was it was to get a, a, a song on, on vinyl. You know, because we, you know, that was the one thing we least wanted was to get a song on a record. And with all the other ones too, man. We listened to them and we're like, this is crap. Yeah. You know, I could smoke this. Give yeah. me a chance. So we sat there, you know, and Brian said, you know, Brian approached us and said, you know, I want you guys to do a single for Metal Massacre. So we went out and uh, we listened to the Metal Massacre, see what kind of music was being played. You know, and we sat there and listened to it. And Kerry decided he needed to make up a song that was better than known. And I think, I think, to me, that that's where I think it started. Because we took what, what we had initially done with, Met, uh, with that Aggressive Perfected and we did that song and we were like so into the song. We were always rehearsing it every day because we wanted to go in the studio and record it, you know, in one shot. We wanted to be good at it. And we just, the more and more we played it, the more and more I think we just got really into the vibe of that song. And once we did the song, Brian said, I want you to record a record for us. You know, and we did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we sat there. Yeah, we sat there like, well, you know, we, you know, we figured, well, we got to re revamp some of our music. So a lot of the songs got dumped, and we took a lot of songs and changed them around. You know, but I mean, I think that's what that's where we initially started was there, and we, you know, we've always had that. That was ours, and we just took it from there on. So you know, that's where we developed it for that Metal Massacre album. How long has Paul being an official member of the band. Yeah, Paul. You want to talk, Paul? I, I'm asking you. <laughs> I've been with the band for two years. How was it then to become a, an official member? Because first, you were invited to to join the band, but... Well, I'd say probably officially on the plane ride over to Europe. That's when Jeff asked me if I wanted to be in the band. And how did you guys get in touch with you? to invite you and to join the band. And well, were you friends when you lived in, in the Bay Area with Forbidden? Were you friends? Have you toured together? How was that? No, well, I, these guys, um, I think there were some mutual friends that they knew, that we also knew, um, well, that I also knew. Um, and they, we when they were, when they were, Yeah, we all knew. Uh, when they were looking for a drummer, I guess uh, some of the people in Testament knew who I was and mentioned it to them. I don't, I don't know exactly how it all worked and I think their uh, manager's uh, assistant knew who I was and I guess that's how my name came up. So they gave me a call. That's great. Dave Lombardo almost left the band in 86. Almost? And almost, oh, he left the band actually. He did. <laughs> he did that time, but he came back one year later. Yeah, I auditioned and we let him back in the band again. What happened? You couldn't find another drum at the time or you wanted him to be in the band? Or no, we uh, we were auditioning drummers, and uh, we had come down to one drummer, uh, and that's Nick Menza. Nick Menza yeah. yeah, we had auditioned Nick, and uh, if, of all uh, of all the drummers, uh, we we had a few drummers that we tried out. Nick was the one that I felt, and I think the rest of us did too, that he had a lot of potential, that he could like be a really good drummer, and uh, and then uh, Rick Rubin called us up and said Dave wants to audition. So it's all right, have him come in and you can sit in and see how he does. <laughs> and he did good. Yeah, so he was in. Has been it released not yet? Oh. It'll be released on the 27th of September. Uh, we have a, a domestic release in America through Warner Brothers. So, but as far as international, uh, American recordings has doesn't have a, a company. What do, you, what do you mean domestic? Domestic meaning that in the U.S. it'll be released through Warner Brothers. American Recordings, Warner Brothers. Okay. But internationally, uh, we really, the, the company doesn't have anyone to do it internationally at the moment. They're still in the works of making a, a deal with uh, 
with the company. So I, I don't know. If, I'm hoping that it'll get released simultaneously all throughout the world. But uh, you know, that's, that's that's their business. They still have to find out who they want to release the record internationally. And so that's up to them. You know, but so I don't know what is going to be released here in, in Brazil. You released the album twice, huh? What what have I understand some some titles of the songs and well, it, those are working titles. You know, we have working titles that we still couldn't get titles for, even even once we had the first song down. And then uh, and then what we did is we gave us what we took about a week off, didn't we? Took about a week, week and a half off, and we went back and listened to it, and we figured, man, we've come up with a better mix, so we remixed the whole thing again. And we, yeah, all the songs, everything. And we liked it, it was a lot better mix, so... Uh, and then, you know, it also gave us an opportunity to, like, also try to find new titles for songs that we uh, hadn't really titled yet. How about the lyrics? The lyrics has changed as well. The themes and of the songs you changed a bit, how, how is that now? This album? Well, uh, it hasn't really changed too much. The only thing that's changed about what we do lyrically is the fact that, uh, is that before, uh, I would write things that would, you know, that I would see on TV or socially, you know, socially uh, conscious things. And this time around, Carrie did that. And I wrote kind of like the fantasy songs about murder and death, you know, nothing about Satan, just about death. Just about that. Yeah, just you about know, that. And, you know, and, and Carrie wrote songs about the things that were going on in, in L.A. that, you know, bothered all of us, actually, because we'd sit there and, and we'd be like getting together, rehearsing new material, and we'd, you know, watch, be watching TV and, we started getting mad at each other because of just the shit that was going on in L.A., you know, as far as uh, the judicial system and just how people in general are living in America, you know. Are the same time, because I read you in an interview that you haven't changed your style. And a lot of bands that used to be to do this trash music, how did you kept this loyalty to, to, to trash? Why do we stay there? Yeah, why do you stay that? Because we're, we're not, not, cause we're not <laughs> phony. <coughs> you know, this we we like this kind of music, and we're not doing it for the money. You know, I, if I wasn't doing this, I'd want to see a band playing this shit. And a lot of the bands that I used to, to I think I thought were credible and had respect for, I don't have respect for them anymore. I think they're crap because they just well, they, they either found out that if you soften up, you get the you know, cashola coming in or whatever, but, you know, we do it because we music, and, you know, I, I consistently try to better what I did on the last record. Mike Carey, once played with Megadeth, helping on tour. Dave Lombard almost joined Megadeth as well, Nick Manson now. What's your relation with the band? With Megadeth? Yeah, it's like Megadeth. Are you friends? Were you friends before? Or? I don't think we were ever really friends. Uh, I think Miss Dane was trying to put together a band and he was trying to pick, you know, he was trying to pick people that he wanted. And he kept, he kept coming across us, you know, and uh, we just kept telling him no. <laughs> that's, a, that's, about, that's about the extent of our relationship with Dave. <laughs> How about Mr. Mr. Titan? That, that tour, how was that? How it, did was, you it, was, it was a really good tour for us. It was, uh, the Clash of Titans was an excellent tour for us. It made him very miserable, but it, yeah. it was a very good tour for us. <laughs> how, how was it? You, one band opened and then the other night was a different band that opened up. Yeah, we, yeah, it was kind of like a rotating thing. Yeah, the only band that was consistent was Alex. They would open every night. They were just, but, uh, uh, you know, they, that was a suggestion. I don't know who brought that up, but one of the bands suggested it, that we rotate the bill and we're like, Fine, fine with us. We'll rotate the bill. We don't care what we play. I can't read. Yeah, you know, and uh, and then towards the end of the tour, of that tour, they uh, nobody would say anything, but uh, we, you know, we we knew what was up. So we just left it at that. We didn't care, you know, whether we open up or close the show. It doesn't matter to us, you know, and it didn't matter to the kids either. I was going to they wanted to put it on radio. Uh, I said, no, no way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they said, they go, can you go back to the studio and record maybe a, a radio song? And it's like, what? It's going to sound just like those ten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to sound just like another Slayer song and it won't get played on the radio. What's the big deal? <laughs> From Terry's being played on the radio, like some heavy stuff is being played on the radio. Why don't you think that you can have a song for this album? 
be brain dead. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And do you think that these fans are now on the charts because of Slayer? Oh, I, that all this heavy metal, all this heavy yeah, it's stuff. Because of a handful of bands, not just us, you know. I yeah. Mean, obviously Metallica. I mean, I mean they didn't open doors that weren't open already, but they uh, made them a little wider. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about, like for example, the last album of Metallica, those ballads and? Well, it's a good re it, well, they, you know, it's a, it's a good record. It's it's produced well. Yeah, they one sound like a campfire song, and the other one sound like a Christmas song. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, man. You listen to that thing, and you see just eight guys sitting around a campfire, you know, just rocking up. It's, well, it's produced well. It's a, it's they got good songs, but I mean, it's like it's not something we would do. You know, you know stay in different circles, I guess. Different circles. Yeah. You do that. You have an empty not just the song but the video as well where did you record it was actually in Egypt and how was that did you have any kind of problems there or I heard something about we, we didn't deal with any of the problems I mean that would have been like the crew and stuff getting all that sorted out before we got there yeah. we went in and did our stuff it was really cool you know because none of us wanted to go until we got there yeah. <laughs> yeah we were in Japan still complaining and we want to go we don't want to go and then when we got there we were like Oh, you didn't want to go for it. Yeah, we didn't want to do it. We were insistent on it. We didn't want to do it. We didn't want to do it. And then when we got there, we were kind of glad that we did it because it was, it was really cool. Uh, we were there, what, eight, nine days, and it was all work. You know? So we, you know, we busted our ass. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of glad we went because uh, it's, I think it's a really good video. Really good video. Yeah, very yeah. We got three videos from you, like Lawrence Symbol and Raining Blood, and both are live, live stuff. And Season is kind of not live, but you prefer doing this kind of stories videos that have a kind of story, or you prefer doing the performance of the band live? I like them both. <coughs> you care about videos, or actually? I like them both because I mean, if they were all live, you know, just like me going to see a live show, you know, when you got TV, you can do anything with that medium. So you know, why not go for it? Just don't do something that nine million other bands did. You know, do something new and unique. It sets your video and your band apart. You chose like season and that just to be put on the spot. Why that? Why that? Because it's more than just a live video. Um, you know, we got to go to Egypt and see all the pyramids and the Nile River and all that stuff that's been around long before we were ever thought about being here. So uh, that's why I chose it. Now you're going to see it. <laughs> Boots. Like two of the bands that are playing this monster of rock, like Kiss and Black Sabbath, they, they have a recent tribute. What about Slayer? Don't you know? Don't you think that you deserve a tribute? Why? Well, deserve? I don't We're not dead yet. <laughs> well, you know, it's just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're not dead yet. So why should we have a tribute album? But it, would you like to? Uh, hell no. Call you? No. no way. No, no way. No, I don't want a tribute album. When I'm dead, they can do one. Because that way I can't complain and argue about what they've done to our song. <laughs> you know, like, if, I'm a, if I'm alive and they're doing a tribute and they're fucking up my song, I'm going to say, you're not doing a tribute, fuck you. No, don't fuck up my song. If you, I should say our song. If you have to choose the band, you like to choose some band so that you think, oh, no. this band could do a Slayer tune. No band can do Slayer tune. No band. No. <laughs> cool, the only band that can do a Slayer tune is Slayer. Do you know that? Right? <laughs> <laughs> 